Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick, and today we'll be going through how to install MX Linux. We'll first download it, and then I'll explain how to flash it on a disk. We'll boot the disk, and finally run the install on a desktop or laptop of your choice. MX Linux is a Debian-based stable release branch that uses XFCE as its default desktop environment, making it geared towards Windows users. As you'll see after the install, it's very Windows friendly. Let's jump right in and first download the latest release of MX18. What we'll do first is go to mxlinux.org. And right off the bat on their homepage, you have the availability of going to the download section. So hit download MX Linux. And it makes quick mention of two different releases, or better yet, architectures on their website. 18.3 available in the 32-bit version or the x64 64-bit kernel version. We'll go ahead and scroll down for the mirrors. And once you've clicked on the mirrors, you can see all the different places that they host the ISO from. Keep scrolling down until you get to the bottom and then choose the closest place to you. I'm in the US, so I'm gonna go ahead and select a mirror from the US. California is fine for me. And we are starting to download MX Linux. Also on a side note, I've just created a subreddit which you should join. It's the perfect place to interact, share, and discuss topics with me. We can discuss things such as software, tech, and engineering. It's called r slash savvy people. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. I hope to see you there. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch the Bolin Adger app in order to flash the image onto a USB CD of my choice. I'll go ahead and put an empty USB stick in and flash the image on the USB in order to create a bootable disk that I can place into my desktop or laptop and install MX Linux on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is select an image and I want to select the MX 18.3 x64 64-bit ISO file that I just downloaded and then I'm going to select a target. Well first I'm going to go ahead and insert my USB into the computer I'm working with here to flash my USB. So when I put it in uh, this will automatically populate the disk. As you can see, I have a SanDisk USB stick with 16 gigs on it. And then the final thing is to simply just hit the flash button. It's going to ask you for a password. Go ahead and type yours in. And the flashing has begun. This might take a little bit of time. And while that's going, MX Linux is increasing in popularity every day and is one of the most trending Linux distributions at the moment. The idea behind it is to keep it a nice, efficient looking desktop with a minimal setup, a stable release, and great performance. And overall, it's medium resource intensive. So it's a great Linux distribution to go ahead and start out with, and we'll get to the install here soon. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit for you guys, and then we're going to get into the installer here. What you're going to do is make sure that after you flash the disk, you're going to inject, eject it, and then you're going to go ahead to uh, the laptop or desktop that you want to go ahead and install it on. Go ahead, put your disk in there, boot up the computer, and you'll want to go ahead and boot into your BIOS screen. You can go ahead and look that up for the system that you're trying to install this on. They all seem to have different ways of getting to the boot screen. And then select your boot order, change the boot order so that you're USB disk boots first or your CD DVD ROM boots first that way it picks up on the image and finally if you've successfully done that you'll see a screen similar to what you're about to see here after the flashing is done. If you went ahead and made it this far please take a moment to like the video it would be greatly appreciated. And now when you've selected the correct USB CD from the boot order and booted up into your system of choice where you would like to install MX Linux on, you should get a screen like this. Got a few options here. You also know you will also notice the options at the bottom, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6, and F7, and some of the default options here at the bottom like English. What we want to do is go ahead and select our first option, the MX 18.3. And give it a second to go ahead and boot up.
This will default us to the live CD and it is really just a demo. So go ahead and close the welcome screen and let's go straight to the installer. I double clicked it there so it gave me a error the second time through. And you can see up here on top, I, I, I enjoy this view here that they give you the time, what date it is, and what the current resource usage is. Uh, we'll, we'll see that later also when we get the installer completely finished with. So first we'll go ahead and accept the terms of use. And if you need to, go ahead and change your keyboard settings in here. We'll go ahead and hit next since uh, that's correct for me. You'll get to select what hard drive you want to use. It says here which, it says here use disk and then you can select if you have more than one it'll let, let you select from the drop down here but there's only one available and this is this 64 gig one that I have reserved for uh, Linux. If you want to go ahead and modify the partitions you can do by running this tool here. It says it's optional, we're not going to do that. And we want to select the auto install using the entire disk. This means it's going to erase the whole entire disk and leave nothing on it. So make sure that you have nothing on the disk that you are trying to install MX Linux on. If you do have something on it, it will be erased in the process of installing MX Linux. So this is a warning for you. Now go ahead and select next. We don't care to encrypt it. And it's giving you one more warning here. Is it okay to format and use the entire disk, the disk name, and uh, for MX Linux? And we, I am confident that uh, we can. So I'm going to go ahead and select yes, and we begin the installation process. Also, it asks you to go ahead and select the boot method. Do you want to install Grub for Linux and Windows? We can go ahead and select that. Location on the install MBR is fine for us and the system boot disk is the one that we just selected before so make sure those two match or else you may get errors. We can go ahead and hit next through here and kind of set things up as we are beginning our install and copying files over to our new system. So uh, computer name I'm going to go ahead and use Savvy Nick as mine and the domain I'm just going to use the Savvy domain here. If you want you can go ahead and install Samba Server Samba Server will help you network between Microsoft Windows computers. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and name a work group that you want to join here. Go ahead and hit next. I'm going to go ahead and leave Samba on there. Might as well install it. Here you'll be able to select the keyboard layout that you want to use. United States American English is fine by me. You can select the drop down and select whichever one is right for you. And then the time format that you want, military time versus the standard time here. Then you have your time zone, wherever you're at and in the world, go ahead and select the correct one for you. The default's fine for me. Service setting, this is an advanced, so we're just going to skip that advanced service setting. Next we're going to go ahead and create a user, Savvy Nick, and then create a default password for that new user that you're creating. It'll light up green if you have confirmed the password correctly. Then if you want to go ahead and put in a root password, you can here. Go ahead and do that. You're more than likely required to do that. You can show your passwords and create an auto login. Auto login I like when it automatically logs in. And if you made changes to the live desktop that you have here in your background, you can go ahead and select this and it will actually keep those changes and port them into your installer. Go ahead and select next. Next is just a special thanks to everybody who has worked on MX Linux. This is pretty cool of them to add this in. Give a little shout out to their community and the people who make it happen. And finally when you get to this last screen here it says oh, basically welcome to your installation, new installation of MX Linux. And when you get to this part here the installation is complete. You can select to automatically reboot the system and load your new MX Linux desktop screen once you go ahead and hit finish. You'll have to remove the installation media that you have in your computer so the USB CD that you have in your computer has to be removed or else you're just going to get booted right back into the live image of MX Linux. Go ahead and hit finish here.
once you get this message, it's safe to go ahead and remove your installation media. If you do it beforehand, you can potentially corrupt your install and have to redo it again. But now, once you've removed your USB or CD, go ahead and hit enter to continue. And you'll see as it reboots, it'll automatically boot in. Select the very first option. And it'll take just a moment here in order to go ahead and boot into our new MX Linux desktop screen. It's looking pretty sharp here. And since I automatically selected it to log in, it will automatically log in without asking me for a password or anything. If you didn't select that option, you would have got a prompt to put in your password. Here's just the welcome screen. We're going to close out of this. And welcome to your new MX Linux 18.3 desktop. This is a very slick layout here. We'll go ahead and explore this another day and do a little bit of a review as well as a walkthrough for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of MX Linux 18.3. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them below in the comments section. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.